Jersey International Master John Watson, and we're continuing with our Gamard lecture of the Gamard French, which goes like this. Okay, that's the key position. That's called the Gamard French defense. You attack this pawn. Now we've already looked at this move here, defending the pawn, and we play that, and that was uh, in the last lecture. Uh, we've looked at the main move, which is this, simply defending the pawn. Black attacks this pawn, white advances here. Now in this position, we looked at, last week, we looked at uh, two weeks ago, or two uh, lectures ago, we looked at this move. And we looked at that, and black kept getting good games. But it's important because it's an aggressive move. So last lecture, we looked at this move, which basically is the same idea, but he's waiting to see what black does. He'd like to move here, and one thing he avoids by doing that is that he avoids here and maybe this move, which is a little awkward. So he defends against that move by playing c3 first. But what we discovered was, okay, to show you again, what that's the move he makes. What we discovered was against c3, you could just attack the center directly. And white would have to give up that pawn, and then black was getting very good play. So that's where we were before. Uh, this time, we're going to look at another move from this position, this basic key position. And it's that. It's sort of pinning the knights, just trying to get the bishop out to an aggressive square. Uh, and black just develops. There are many moves here. <laughs> this is a key position. All kinds of things have been played here. The usual move here, I'm not as excited about that anymore. Um, this move, simply attacking the bishop. Uh, and oddly enough, a very strange move, this move, simply to be able to attack the bishop without getting doubled pawns. Um, I think the most interesting move besides bishop e7, <laughs> it's a lot of moves you can play, is to come all the way out to this square with a pawn. And you'll see why, because that something like that will happen in this game. OK, white plays knight b3. Now, again, remember, the knight was getting in the way. So the knight's got to get out of the way. And that square is not exactly perfect. It's not a very aggressive square. But in this case, it serves its purpose. Let me show you something else now. White could have played this move before. And then black could have played this move. And this would have transposed. Uh, the other possibility is black would have ignored that and play here. You can check theory for all this. It kind of, they almost all come out to the same kind of position. But in this game, white played this move first. Black simply develops. As I say, not the only move. White brings the knight up. And now this funny move. Well, there are other moves here, but this is the most interesting and fun. I actually prefer this move to anything else. It looks very odd, but for one thing, it does threaten to chase away the knight. But more importantly, it clears this square for this knight. And you'll see how that works uh, in a second. OK, he stops this move, a4. That was really quite a threat. Uh, to chase away the knight and then just keep developing, what was the point of playing knight up then? And you'll notice the knight has nowhere to go either, also. It has to actually go back to this dreadful square that it began on. So white simply stops that move. OK. And now black plays this key move. Now, why can't really afford to give up his good bishop? We talked about good and bad bishops. See where these pawns are? That's a bad bishop because it's stopped by its own pawns in the center. This is a good bishop because it isn't blocked by pawns in the center. So that, that's the first point of this move. OK, now in this game, white goes for broke. Uh, white can also just retreat. For example, there, there's a place. You can retreat to that square. Knight's inactive. And then you might wonder, well, what's this knight doing here? Well, let's just go a little bit further. Black would play there. Instead of just playing c5, as in a lot of French defenses, he's going to support c5. And then, for example, well, let's say castles. Black plays c5. Well, there's already a threat here. So maybe he has to take. Well, now there's a threat again. And there's some problems here. Black can develop very easily. Black has no trouble. Black can put another that. Pieces like this, castle. So that's considered a pretty good variation. OK, so in the game, he actually says, OK, you're giving me a pawn, and I'll take it. OK, so white's won a pawn. And black's piece here isn't exactly thrilling, and this piece isn't exactly thrilling. Uh, so why not? Just get castle, bring your pieces out. He's a pawn ahead. But the problem with this is that now black gets to stop white from castling with a tremendous piece here. And that's very typical compensation. If you can stop your opponent from castling and get very active pieces and two bishops. When you have two bishops, often that's a huge advantage, especially if they're active like this. 
then that's enough compensation, if not more, for a pawn. Let's just keep going. White tries to get rid of his bad bishop. Good move. That's his bad bishop. It's stuck behind his pawns. That's black's very good bishop. Let's get rid of it. The only thing, of course, is that black's still developing and white still hasn't castled. So white tries to get another piece out. Maybe he's going to come here and try and exchange another piece. Maybe he's even thinking about sneaking the king this way, although that's very dangerous. So black comes back. That might seem to be a funny move. You'd think black might want to play this move, and in fact that's a pretty good move, but he's a little afraid of this counterplay. So he decides, I'll just stop that. Besides, I'm just going to stop that sort of thing. Now if white plays something like this, he's going to lose a lot of squares, uh, maybe even this move, and if he takes it, something very aggressive like this, and the knight is pinned. Okay, let me revert to here. So, so white goes back. That seems like a funny move, but he's got to get castled. If you look at it, it's hard to make other moves. What's he going to do? Uh, black's all ready to break open this way, for example. All of his pieces are getting active. Typical Gimard move, and all of a sudden the rook's active. We've seen that in a lot of games. So white plays logically to play here and block off that bishop and get castled. He is a pawn ahead, so he's counting on that. But black breaks through. We were just talking about that. Okay, white tries to break through this way now because otherwise there's centers in the there's squares in the center being attacked. I won't try and describe that exactly, but you can take a look at this and you'll see that's true. Okay, so here's this is very cute. Black plays. Let's go back a second. Black plays this move even though this knight's attacked. Why? Because Let's take a look at that. If he takes that knight, you would think that black's trying to play there and get some sort of checkmate, but it really isn't much of a checkmate. So what is black really doing here? This is a whole knight. Okay, what he's doing is this move. Now he's threatening rook takes knight, that's check, and this double check, and winning the queen. So that's a good start, and what is, um, what can black do about that? What can white do about that? Well, he's going to have to cut off the queen. Now, for example, just move the queen back. doesn't almost matter where, as long as you're protecting this. Uh, and now you're threatening this, and there's nothing to be done about it. So that would be a, a very good line for black. In fact, really just winning. So it's kind of a clever little combination. Okay, so queen h4, white doesn't fall for that. White kicks the, the queen to begin with, and black plays this cute little move. Instead of retreating his queen, he's aiming for a fork here. And, for example, if you take a look at this, um, what would happen here? That's what happened in the game. If he plays here, check. Now, remember, black's already won the piece here, so it's going to come out even material. Uh, white's got to defend his queen so he can get his piece back. Okay, now it's even material, but, oh, no, look out. Two pieces there, and a very, very bad pawn structure for white. Um, it's going to be hard to hold, uh, to even play this for even much longer, because already um, you're effectively a pawn down because that's so weak. The other rook can come over, the pawn can come up, and white's stuck for a long time. Probably putting the rook on the file is very good. So that's a variation sort of similar to the game. It's basically pretty bad. Okay, so black's temporarily, a, uh, white's, black's temporarily a piece ahead, but he's on the queen, and he's on the, white is on the knight and the queen. So not surprisingly, he checks anyway. White decides to get even material. But again, look at this pawn structure. Horrible pawn structure. At least this wasn't allowed yet. Okay, now this is a big threat to tag. So white has to do something about it, defends, but look how passive that rook is. And now black's going to try and clean up on some pawns. White attacks. Now that's a good move. He wants to activate that rook. And if black plays here, of course, well, that's kind of depressing because the bishop's cut out. So black plays simple move right here. Now the point is if he takes, black just takes back this way, defending that, and getting really more attack going. So white isn't interested in that, but white's really kind of getting to be at the loss for move, so he goes ahead and he defends this one. That's an important one because it's on the seventh rank. So black says, okay, I'll take the other one. Okay, well now it's even material, but you can see that black's pieces are much more active, and that's a weak pawn, and there's always the idea of playing here and winning a piece. So black's just much more active. White prevents that idea, blocks it off. Black just continues, wins a pawn, and wins another pawn. Now he's threatening check, so there's no time to take this bishop. 
that check would win this rook. Okay, so white actually plays, excuse me, I went a little fast there. Uh, white actually moved the king up to stop that threat. Black took. Now, you and I might play on here, but at this point, uh, white just resigned. The, the, the reason for that, if a good player is two pawns ahead, and these are grandmasters, he's attacking this pawn, which will mean another, another attack here. He's threatening check, which will mean this pawn will also fall. Two pawns ahead with much of a better position is enough to resign, uh, and so white does. White finally just gives up here. So that was kind of a nice game. Let's look really fast at how we got there. Okay, Gimard. Okay, this position, we're going to see it again and again. He pins. Black simply develops. No, he doesn't have to do that. You might be interested in playing, looking into this move. We're not going to do that, but he played that move anyway, but he played it uh, a move later. So he simply developed. White made that key move. So these two moves together, to me, indicate that Black should often play that move. Ready to attack the knight. And in this game, okay, knight back, the key move, in order to push this pawn up, maybe push this pawn and then push this pawn. But White decided, well, I'm not going to allow that. So White took a pawn, and Black got tremendous development and stopped White from castling. Okay, let me show you another game. Okay, the next game we're going to look at is Gallagher, Vaganian, Calvia, 2004. Here we go. Okay, this position, you're going to get this in 90% of your games if you're playing a good player. Uh, this is a good move, because when black plays here now, he's not exerting as much pressure here, because one of these knights is going to be pinned. And white can also take this sometimes, and in fact, we're going to look at that. This time, black says, okay, just take that knight, I don't care. Uh, which is a little bit of a strange decision, because it costs a tempo. On the other hand, now black has two bishops. And black has another possibility to attack the center, and then maybe bring the other pawn up. So maybe the double pawns don't bother him so much. White makes a very good move, covers very important squares. Uh, this time the knight does a lot there, for once. It also opens up the bishop, as usual. Okay, black decides, I'm going to get out of there. And white attacks the queen uh, and tries to get rid of the bad bishop again by trying to force bishop e7. Now let me see, there's maybe an interesting option here. Um, good play here, which at first looks kind of awkward, doesn't it? Because he wants to play here, and guess what that does? That traps the queen. The queen has no squares. Uh, and then you go, well, that's easy enough to stop. And you look at it, and well, it's not so easy. Because if the bishop goes here, the knight takes it. And really, where is the queen going to go that's logical here uh, to get out of trouble? Well, the queen can't really go here because the knight comes anyway. So there are moves here. You could play, for example, this move, but that's very negative, isn't it, retreating? So really... It looks pretty good, except it turns out black can just play there, attacking the, the knight. And if the knight takes, if you look at it, it's trapped. The knight is trapped. can't go anywhere. So knight a5 is actually just a mistake, even though it looks very attractive. What did white actually play? Good move. He's attacking the queen another way and getting rid of that bishop. And now he plays knight a5. So this time, if black plays c6, white simply takes, and he's on everything. So the knight won't be trapped anymore, and white will be winning. So let's go back. Obviously, black doesn't play that, but black's in some trouble because of this move. So black takes that. Now, that's sort of interesting. Black really doesn't want to get involved in this because he, then he can't defend the bishop. And actually, the queen is trapped again. Excuse me. So he makes room first for his queen like this. And he's threatening check. So white's going to play naturally here. He's going to take that. Now, there are other moves here. Uh, so maybe we should take a quick look at another move here, which is this move. Once again, hitting that square a couple of times. And this gets to be pretty interesting. Um, black is going to take, really not much choice. And white's going to attack. And now the queen really doesn't have any good squares. It turns out the joint here is pretty risky. So the queen just goes there. And this is a funny-looking position because it looks like white can just play this move and attack here and attack here. That's checkmate, this square here, and this is a piece that's attacked. And so this gets very tactical. But it turns out that black's okay here. Black can actually just castle. 
funny looking move, but he's counting on this little fork, which is going to win the piece back. So after castling, white would probably play here, and then black would probably take back. And still, there's this problem that if queen takes, which is certainly the natural move here, queen has to go somewhere. This, this pawn is attacked, too. So maybe the queen goes back, uh, black takes, and black's very happy here because he has two center pawns, two mobile center pawns, and we've seen that in other uh, positions. We've already seen that kind of uh, game. For example, after this, maybe he just plays here. Nice open pieces. And as we've seen before, these pawns are very hard to stop in the long run. For example, if the knight goes here, maybe you just go here, ready to play this move. Uh, play castles, for example. Maybe you have this tactic. Or you can just play e5. So to go back to the game, <laughs> uh, after this cute little move here, white simply takes back with a pawn. Now white's a piece ahead, so black wins his piece back. White goes here, trying to drive the queen away from the defense of this bishop. Black attacks the knight, otherwise he'd just be a piece down. And now he plays a clever little move. Instead of taking this knight back, he attacks both knights. And the idea there is that if he plays this move, he might get in some trouble with this move. That's going to be a little difficult to, to uh, stop things. Now, he can do this, but it's very, very tricky. He would have to defend this first. Now, he can't castle. We all know that, right, because of checkmate. So what does he do? He has to come back and defend it. And then White has a move that seems to almost win because he's threatening check, which would win the rook. So that would be very nice. But it turns out that Black can, can uh, get away with this just barely by playing, by getting right out of the check by playing this move, which is kind of silly but seems to work out. And I think there's another way to try that. Um, but that's okay. That's, that's enough, I think. Uh, let's go back to the game. And what does... Oh, but he plays h6 instead. So he avoids that line completely, probably with good reason. White plays the natural move. He pins this pawn to the rook, threatens this. That means what, black doesn't have time to take this. Black castles. Now he really is threatening that, and he's threatening the other knight. So you can see this is just a back-and-forth tactical struggle. Now he attacks the knight again. He refuses to take these knights. He just keeps attacking them. And white re re retreats, because otherwise the knight, queen's going to get here, which is not only winning a pawn, but, well, he's going to take the knight with check first. Let's just look, look at that for just a second. So really the, white, the knight can't retreat first because that's with check. And now black's got the initiative. These pawns are very strong. And uh, white really doesn't want that. So white plays... White simply plays that move, and now black has to take his piece back. White castles. The problem with, uh, just look at this for a second, the problem with taking here, which would at least get that pawn back, black's going to play this move. And if that knight moves, he's going to win this pawn, unless the knight moves here, but then look at this. These pawns are very strong, and this pawn's going to hang if the knight moves. So you can see that's just not desirable. White, black's winning some material, and he's got great pieces. So white doesn't play that way. White simply castles. Black plays over trying to put pressure on this and also defend that pawn. White takes, at least gets part of the, gets a pawn back, and now centralizes the knight. That protects this and attacks the queen. But in a second, you'll see what's happening here. Um, gives that pawn back, and all of a sudden we get something very typical in the French defense. This is an ideal position. I play the French defense. I've won a lot of games with this kind of structure. Uh, the center pawns are just too good. And the bishop's now out. The bishop's now free, so the bishop's at least as good as the knight. Okay. It's funny, this almost becomes a matter of technique for a great player here. And Onion has been around for years and knows what he's doing. So I'm going a little fast, but you see the basic idea here. Nothing much is changing. These pawns are eventually going to win this game. I might go back and show you kind of a clever move here. Uh, this move was actually worth talking about a second because it threatened this on the queen also. And that's why you saw what happened. But the rook didn't go there just to attack the queen. It went there to attack this weakness here. Okay, so natural moves here. Black develops. 
White tries to indirectly attack the uh, queen. Black does attack White's queen. White escapes. Black is defending uh, this pawn now, a little extra defense here, and this square, so the queen can't come down here. So it's just really a matter of a big center, and uh, White's pieces really can't do much here. So he decides to try and chase away. Um, he tries to control some of these squares here. Black brings the queen over. That has an interesting point. It's really trying to cut off squares from this queen. And what that means is black has a threat. It's not so easy to see, but it's really pretty simple once you look at it. Uh, at least he's going to have a threat in a second. Um, he's trying to really cut off all the squares. For example, after this move, which is what happened, black can play that move, and now he has a threat. And the threat is simply this, trapping the queen, which shows how effective these pawns are. It's hard for white to coordinate. So white makes room, but that gets rid of his only really good piece, which was that nine. Black advances. The two center pawns are always a, a real difficulty here. The problem now, of course, is black's winning material. In order to stop, really, from being trapped, this is what happened, from the queen being trapped. And there we go. A pawn ahead, that's a weak pawn, that's another weak pawn, even that's a weak pawn. So black has a bit of a problem with his pawn structure, but he's He's just doing very well anyway because he's a pawn up with, with, a, with a very nice position. This is a nice move because the pawn is pinned on the rank, and he's going to put the knight on a little better square. But black attacks. Now, this is interesting because uh, black is still trying to attack. This king's very loose. And, in fact, if this game's very interesting, that puts him two pawns ahead. And white rather naturally wants to get his pawn back, so he, uh, and maybe he wants to maybe break through. So black makes another move for protecting here. White says, okay, I'm going to take this pawn. But all of a sudden, it's not just the pawns that are all weak. It's the king. And so that's the end of the game, because the king has only one place to go, which is here. And check. King moves, and you win a rook. So that's the end of that game. Let me show you real quickly roughly how we got there. Okay. Okay, so we saw this move again. Now, I think w what you should do in this position probably is play the move we saw in the last game, which is this. And then you can play this move later. We saw this variation here, attacking there. And the knight came back down here with the bow, and white's pieces got all messed up. But it, was, it wasn't a terrible game. I tried to win a pawn, if you remember right. That's probably the best way to play it. Uh, but best is a funny word because, in fact, what he did is perfectly okay. This is a known variation. A little riskier, though, you can see, because all of a sudden, all of a sudden, if you look at it, there were, so there were some, it was very risky. Things were, were getting very close. Now, it turned out by making that move, black was able to survive. Notice, by, I don't know if I mentioned this, but if he goes there to save that piece, black has the check move first. That's with check, and then he can just take back. So that's, let me go one more move. That's basically an overview of what happened. So this gives you a complete, well, pretty complete repertoire. You still have to look at some books and think about it and play it a little bit. But we've now looked at three lectures worth of the Gamard variation, and you've seen really almost every important move that white can play. And you see that black has very dynamic play. People who play the Tarash defense are not thrilled with getting something this dynamic. They think they're going to get a nice, safe opening. But it turns out this makes it very double-edged all of a sudden. A lot of times they're not comfortable with that. Because you can see a position like this is extremely double-edged. And if you give black one move, he's breaking up the center and getting a good game. So thank you very much for listening to this series, and I hope you can go out and use this defense to the Tarash variation in the French uh, successfully. And I hope you enjoyed the lectures.